Hey everybody, it's Mike Drudge coming to you from Vaught RV here in Fort Worth, Texas. I'm excited to do a walk around video today on a 2023 Jayco Eagle. This is a 321 RSTS. Before I get started, let me point out my personal three favorite things about this model. Number one, it's got a tankless on demand water heater. Number two, it's only a little over 36 feet long, so you can stay in most any national or state park with this. Number three, we have an ottoman. It serves as a seat, there's storage inside of it, and you can play cards on it or you can use it as a footstool. So let's walk around on the outside of this before we go on the inside. As I mentioned, just a little over 36 feet long, a little over 11,000 uh, pounds dry weight. So not a super heavy fifth wheel. As always, if you have questions about your ability to tow, give us a call. We'll look up your specific vehicle and make sure it's safe to pull what you intend to pull. Now, nice pass-through storage up front here and quite a bit of it. Look how clean this is. We have our diamond plating down here below and you see the insulation up here on top. I'll point out some things on the other side, but before we go over there, I have motion sensor lights here, USB and household current, as well as coax cable. So I can put a television in here if I want to, uh, nice for patio viewing. Over here we have a griddle platform that'll go into what Jayco calls a J port so you can have an outside cooking location. I'll point that out in just a little bit. We have a propane bottle on this side as well as the other side. Now I got a storage compartment up here which would be used for a generator uh, in the event that you opted to put a generator in here. Now this particular unit's not gen prepped. If it's gen prepped, you can pop a generator in here a little bit easier. Either way, you've got extra storage up here. And here's your battery uh, tray over here where your house batteries will go. We don't place those in until you purchase the unit. So that way you know they're fresh and you know that they're uh, in there and they haven't sprouted legs and walked away before you get to pick it up. Other propane bottle on this side. Now, opposite side of our pass-through storage over here, this door also encloses what I call the wet bay area. So these are all your connections on the inside. Turn this light on here. Have our hot and cold spray port up here, which is basically an outdoor shower. This takes all the guesswork on how to hook this up. If this is your first fifth wheel, it can be a little intimidating. Never fear. If whether you're sanitizing your tanks, dry camping, filling your tank up with fresh water, just set these knobs according to this guide and you're good to go. And we have, of course, our gray and black tank valves here. Now over there to the left, you can see a battery disconnect and that red switch. And there's also our auto level controls. The neat thing about it is, is you can control your auto level from out here. You can do it from inside. And finally, you can do it from your phone as well. Last thing I'll point out, these motion sight sensor lights aren't on, but if they are, when you're loading things in, these are gonna pop on for you. We have our 1800 watt pure sine wave inverter that lives up here. So you have household current on the inside of the coach, even if you don't have shore power. Boom, I love this. So here we have a tankless on-demand Furion water heater. Now what's special about this, when you're out there shopping, you may see other tankless water heaters out on the market. The thing to be aware of is there's different BTU ratings on different tankless water heaters. The ones that Jayco installs are 60,000 BTUs. That's significant. Most of the others out there with the competition are 40,000. That's a very significant jump in the amount of hot water that this will create for you. It's also got a little mixing reservoir in the back, which uh, sort of minimizes the shock value when you're going from hot to cold. It's another add-on to these, and it's very, very nice to have a tankless water heater. It's perpetual hot water. You're not gonna run out. Really love that. Detachable 50 amp power cord right here. That's about all I need to say about that. We have our furnace uh, vent right there. Now, as always, the fiberglass walls on Jayco units are vacuum bonded. 144 tons of vacuum 
for 16 minutes. Think of it as a giant food saver for an RV wall. Why does that matter to you? Since jaco has been doing this, it's virtually eliminated the possibility of delamination over the lifetime of the coach, which of course tanks the value. It's, it's a slow, tedious process. It slows up the progress down the, uh, the production line, but you're the beneficiary of it because you end up getting a better product. All right, sneaking around the backside here, you can see that there's a camera up there uh, we have got a rear facing camera. There's cameras up on front on either side. So when you hit your left turn signal or your right turn signal, you'll get a clear shot down either side of the coach. And we've also ordered this with a camera over the door. That's new in 2023. The cameras can be used for a security system as well. And I'll show you where that switch is on the inside. But when you get to your campsite, take your monitor out of your truck, put it inside the coach, turn the switch on, now you've got a 360 view of all the goings on on the outside of your coach. That's really fantastic. Now we've got a towing package here, so if you want to and can legally pull a small trailer with, uh, I don't know if it's better with me in the shade or not there, Brian, <laughs> but you, got, you can have, haul a little boat, uh, a small utility vehicle or something like this, or of course you can just put a cargo carrier back here for firewood, your big green egg, kids' bikes or whatever and there's a four prong uh, wiring connector here for lights back here as well. So that's pretty neat to have that. Uh, I mentioned uh, the J port and this is it. So if you wanna have an outside cooking location right here's the uh, place to do it. That platform um, goes in here. It's just like a hitch receiver on your truck. Brings your cooking platform out here and we have an LP quick connect right under here. Pop it in there and you can have a griddle on the outside here. Keep the smells and the smoke and everything out here. Now, of course, you know from watching my videos, this is the fun side of the RV. This is where all the fun stuff happens. Thing to note here is I've got an awning here on the main part of the house. I've also got an awning attached to the slide. So all together there, the vast majority of the fun side of the unit is covered on the patio side. This is where your fire pit is. This is the picnic table. This is where all the fun stuff's happening. Um, now we do have a slide out here and I've, I've mentioned this before. When you've got multiple slides on the fun side, you are taking up a little bit of the real estate on the fun side. And a lot of campsites that you end up staying at, sometimes your neighbor might be, I don't know, this close right here. So yes, when your slide comes out, you do take up some real estate here, but I don't have a slide up here. So maybe the picnic table's here. Every campsite's oriented a little bit differently. One thing I do like about this, it's a great place to put firewood, bicycles and stuff, even though your awning may be out. Maybe it's windy and you wanna roll the awning in because it's real windy. You can still keep the firewood dry, keep your bike under there dry, stuff like that. It kind of acts like a little covering at night keep stuff, keep the dew off of it, and uh, keep things dry. Just a little tip. Okay, now, speaker out here, this is, uh, you'll notice this logo right here. So this is a JBL logo. The sound system in this is JBL, and the speakers are JBL. It's a giant leap forward from what they used to be. So this is actually a decent sound system. A little light switch right here, which is a blue light that casts a nice blue light under the steps here. Makes it safer going in and out of the unit can't see it because it's so bright out here speaking of the steps when it's time to travel these simply lift up and stow for travel here's the magic look it's not coming down crashing on my head it's got a lift assist when uh, these first came out jaco did not adopt them because they didn't have this feature that thing could come crashing down on your head nobody wants that they waited until the technology was refined so that they would behave like this. That's great. Each one of these legs is adjustable. So if you're on different terrain, you have a nice firm connection to the ground going in and out of the coach. So I also have a grab bar here, which of course pops in for travel and gets it out of the way. So all the fun stuff on the outside, let's go on the inside and have a look. Okay, now we're on the inside of this 321 RSTS, and this has one of those magical things that I love about floor plans. When you have 
opposing slides. I have a slide over there, I have a slide over here. When these go out, it transforms this living area. One thing to note is when the slides are in, you have no access to this back part of the coach. You do have access to part of the refrigerator, but that slide's gonna come up to right here, this slide's gonna come to right here. So you can get in, get over to the freezer or refrigerator. Of course, you can get up the steps into the bathroom and the bedroom, which I'll show you in a second. But having said that, opposing slides, I'm a huge fan because it really gives you more real estate back here. So let's talk about this. This is a classic fifth wheel floor plan. And by that, I mean it has the, the key suite elements. You've got a sofa in the back, recliners with a perfect viewing angle of the television over here. These are manual recliners. You just pull up right there and boom. And they are what they call wall huggers. So even though it reclines, it uh, you can do that even though it's right up against the wall. Pull this like so. You have cup holders here. And again, perfect viewing angle across from the television. When uh, RV manufacturers started coming out with recliners and stuff that looked like household furniture years ago, they were exceedingly uncomfortable. They've come a long way. Jayco's ahead of the game because Stacy Stewart is actually an in-house designer. So she's responsible for all the decor choices, the furniture choices, and this is really quite, quite comfortable. In the middle here, I've got a little storage cubby for remote controls and stuff here as well. Now, uh, this sofa over here does fold out to become a bed. So in the event that you do have guests, you can fold this out into a bed. And I always say tongue in cheek, whether or not you tell your friends this, this makes into a bed is entirely up to you, but it does and it's quite comfortable. Now we have roller shades, blackout roller shades all the way around and they're soft clothes, just like that. Uh, they've gone from, these used to be pleated shades and Jayco has upgraded to roller shades, which are really fantastic. Even on the Eagle line, which is a base uh, model of the fifth wheel, you have nice soft close roller shades. Um, smoked glass uh, inserts on the cabinetry up above, so plenty of storage up there for games and extra linens and so on. And then on either side of the sofa, you can see there's household current as well as USB charging ports. Now let's talk about the entertainment center here. Uh, I have a smart TV right here. Uh, again, a JBL sound system down here with JBL speakers and three zones. So you can, A is actually the speakers right here. B are the speakers that are in the ceiling. C are the speakers that are out on the patio. And you can turn them all on at the same time if you want to. So go ahead and turn that off. But JBL, thumbs up, glad, glad Jayco did that. Now we have a Furion fireplace down here. Think of this as a small space heater for your RV. When they first started coming out with these, a lot of people gave me the eye roll. Why do you need a fireplace in an RV? It's a space heater. If you paid your 50 bucks a night at the campground, it's a little chilly. Use this to knock off the chill of your unit, not your own propane. And it does a really nice uh, job of it. Again, smart TV. This is an Amazon Fire TV. And then we have some storage up on top here. And I love the forethought that went into this. We already have an HDMI cable that's wired into the back of the TV here. So if you want to put, say, a DVD player or something, it's easy to do it, plug and play right up there. Now moving into the galley area, um, this is great. This is a liquid chalkboard. So you can write uh, your plans, your trip schedule, your grocery list, happy birthday, whatever, and then wipe it off. It's really kind of fun to do that. Again, light pops on when the door opens and what Jayco's done is made these shelves all adjustable. You can remove them entirely if you have a tall item on the bottom, but they're all adjustable up and down. So whatever the, the height of the items are that you need to store, easy enough to do that. Now, double basin uh, stainless steel st sink with a matte black high-rise faucet. You'll see these water spigots in all the Jayco uh, fifth wheels. 
there's a five gallon water jug that's underneath the island here. So you're cooking and drinking that water. You're not drinking sometimes not so good water at an RV park. Now the North Point and the Pinnacle, that water jug's down in the basement. On the Eagles, it lives right underneath this island here. Here's something cool. This is a wireless charger. So if your phone has the technology to do it, put your phone on there and boom, you can see it starts charging automatically. So if you're just in here grabbing a sandwich, you're gonna leave again. You don't know where your cord is for charging, just lay your phone there. Now, if I press down on that and lift it up, look what we have. I've got USB-C and regular USB and then two household current plugs here too. So if I have a coffee maker or a blender or something like that, I've got power up on top here. Might as well go ahead and show off the storage underneath the island here. A little shallow cabinet here, a drawer up on top, which reveals our tire pressure monitoring system. And there's that jug I was telling you about down here. And where's the trash can go? You know, this is something that we didn't think about in our first couple RVs. The trash can's gonna go somewhere. Tra you, you got trash, you're always gonna have trash. So it's always nice to have a dedicated place for the trash. And uh, boom, right there it is. Now, cooking area. We have a three burner cooktop stove here with backlit controls. Decent sized little oven here, big enough for pizzas and pot pies and so on and a little more storage down here. Now this revealed, of course this goes to our microwave. This reveals our strainer right there and our teak cutting board insert right there. I really like both of those. This is inset just a little bit. So if you're washing dishes, lay them up there, they can drip dry. Doesn't make a mess on your countertop. Microwave up top here, uh, very decent sized microwave. Um, nearly residential size. Now this unit's got solar already on board. We've got 300 watts of solar power. So uh, two times 190 up on the roof. Why does that matter? It matters if you're going to do a lot of dry camping. If you're, you know, solar is a whole other topic and we need to do some videos on it. How much solar do you need? That's only a question that you can answer. If you're never going to go dry camping, you're always gonna take a coach to a campground, plug it up to shore power, then uh, the cost for solar is really something that, that you, you don't need. If you're gonna take it out into Timbuk nowhere with no power and you wanna stay there for an extended period of time, then solar becomes all the more important because it'll allow you to have household current in here for an extended period of time. It'll help keep those batteries charged now there's no simple one size fits all formula to say, well, if you have this many panels and this much battery, then you're good to go. It depends on how many people are in this unit. How many times are you opening and closing the refrigerator door? What's the ambient temperature? How many days of sunshine are you getting? All that to say, it's nice to have a couple panels up on top to keep those batteries healthy in any scenario. Now, before I leave the galley area, I just want to talk real quickly about Jayco's cabinet build. Every Jayco, okay, is going to have solid wood faces to the drawers and drawers, doors and drawers, 75 pound ball bearing drawer glides and their full extension drawer glides. Um, and you know, they're five sided, you know, a lot of manufacturers are going to not even have this piece here. They're going to use the front part of this drawer as the front part of this box. It's not as strong. All in all, this is cabinetry at its finest. This is what you would see in a residential application, and I really appreciate that. Now, on this unit, we've got a four-door gas electric refrigerator. It's a pretty decent sized fridge, so this will run off propane if you're off in the boondocks and you don't have electrical power. It will continue to run off of propane. Um, as long as you have it set to automatic, it's going to run on electric when it has electric and it will prefer electric when it's available. Nice amount of storage here in this what I would call coffee bar area. I'm curious, and I want to take a vote here. How many of y'all like this backsplash? So first time I saw it, I liked it. Yeah, okay. The more I look at it, the more I like it. But as always, your vote counts way more than mine. 
I'd be curious to see what you guys think. Drop a comment below and let me know what you think of this backsplash. I think it's kind of classy. It's the only place that it shows up on this unit and it adds some nice contrast here. Oh, boom, yeah, there is some over there. How about that? Thank you. Yeah, this first first mistake I made, normally I make it till the end of January to make a mistake, but here it is, January 12th, and boom. Backsplash, back. there's probably some in the bathroom too, we'll see. Anyway, look at all this storage up here. Flexible storage in here that holds Brian's camera bag. This can be a coat closet or this has actually got magnets on it. You can pop it up there or pop it down here and have a, have a shelf and basically be a pantry of sorts. So I've got storage there, storage up here, up top there, a drawer and more storage down below. I love little cubbies like this. I'm thinking that's a great place to toss the flip flops extra pair of shoes or whatever, just to have get stuff out of there, the dog toys or kids toys or whatever, so you're not tripping over them. There's a lot of ways you can use that open little spot there. Now, a lot of people have watched my videos and said, oh, there's no power in here. I can't put a coffee maker in here, but there actually is. We've got power up here. There's also USB over here. That's a change in 2023, not really a change, but an enhancement. Jayco has added a lot more USB uh, charging ports everywhere. Table that expands out, pull this out. Now I can seat four people comfortably around here and there's a little extra secret storage under there. Got our, our chairs over here, flip up that seat and yes, put some games and pens and pencils under there. And I pointed out this ottoman, which I really am just a fan of because of the extra storage that it affords. Again, it can be a coffee table out, pull it out in the middle and play board games and so on. Now, you'll see these little guys here. These are little lighting shortcuts. So I can turn uh, all the exterior lights on and off, our ceiling lights and pendant lights, and whoop, there's some more USB charging ports. All right, now. Here's the brains of the unit. This is an Android tablet. This is a BM Pro system. If I go to home, which we are right now, I can control and monitor all the systems on the RV right here. Our climate control, I've got our main AC and our second AC. The little droplet there shows our tank levels, which are of course all empty now. The gear is our leveling and our slide out motors and our awning motors already did our temperatures and there are lighting this is cool you can drag these right and left to dim the lights and then it'll stay on that setting every time you turn it on and off and then we've got to uh, monitor our power systems here and our connectivity right there now here's a cool thing if something were to happen with this that screen went black it is an android tablet computers have electric gremlins sometimes these little switches below here are hardwired so these are all the lights right here. I can turn all the lights on and off by simply hitting that. How about the slides? Hit this arrow once. A1 is awning one. A2 is awning two. Slide one, slide two, slide three, and then extend and retract. These are hardwired into the coach. Has nothing to do with the touchpad up here. So a lot of folks don't realize if for some reason this screen were to go bad, we don't see it very often at all as a matter of fact, but if it did, you do have hardwired switches as a backup. Last thing I'll say is that you can control all this stuff from your phone. Simply put the BM Pro app on your phone and you can do all this stuff on your phone. Little toggle switch here, which is our ceiling fan in the living room area for some reason. I think every manufacturer puts the toggle switch for the ceiling fan right here. <laughs> so there it is. And of course, if you watch my videos, you know that this is in fact a grenade launcher for security. Say hello to my little friend. No, it's called a thermistor. It's sampling the air temperature, sending that information back here so that temperature staying consistent with what you have it set. There's one in the back, one in the front, one outside too. All right, bathroom. Here's another vote. What do y'all think of this color? You're probably tired of me asking, but I'm gonna keep asking because I'm getting conflicting messages. Last week, one of you guys said, I'd paint it, I'd paint it right away. A lot of people said, no, nah, I love it. This is the only place in the coach that the color blue shows up. Um, when I saw it at first, I thought it was very okay. <laughs> 
And now the more I see it, the more I actually, I really like it. So, uh, but I'm not an interior decorator, but let me know what you think. You like it? Yes? No? Maybe? In the middle? Undermount sink right here, and we do have a medicine cabinet. Thank you, Jayco. Love to have a medicine cabinet to put your toothbrush and so on in there. Backlit uh, LED light around the backside of the uh, medicine cabinet. Now, right here on this wall, as you can see, is the water heater controls. That's your Furion tankless water heater controls uh, right here in the bathroom. Now, I'm six feet tall, plenty of room for me to maneuver in here. Gosh, even if I was, what, 6'8", with this skylight up here, plenty high enough. Jayco's and enhance the shower fixtures, a much larger shower head for 2023, and it's still matte black. Um, and you have a little bench over here to sit down or shave your legs if you do that kind of thing. There is a ceiling vent up here. This is covered. You don't need to put a cover on it, so it can't rain in this. This is the way it's designed. When you need the vent, simply turn the fan on when you don't you have to worry about it you don't have to crank it up or down it's covered from the top now we'll go into the bedroom area this has uh something that i love because i have one at home and that's a king bed um, what's better a king bed or a queen bed do you like a king bed do you have a king bed at home if you like a king bed at home you might like a king bed in your rv what i also say the greatest thing about a king bed is it's king bed the worst thing about a king bed and RV, it's king bed. It takes up really this whole room. I do have room to get up here and make the bed a little bit. There's a decent amount of room over on this side to get up and make the bed. So it's up to you though. If you like a king bed at home, you got one here. Now you see that outlet down there in the bottom, there's a little white sticker on it that says that's inverted power. So if you are out, turn the truck off, you have no shore power, you want to come back here and take a nap, catch a few winks, maybe you have a CPAP machine, you can plug it into that and you'll have household current even though you're not plugged up to shore power. So that's that inverter working for you. I have lighting shortcuts up here. There's some on that wall over there as well. Of course, you can reach up here and control your, your reading lights. Now that switch over there on that wall, see it says security camera? I alluded to that earlier. So when you get set up at camp, take that monitor from the front of your truck. Most people will bring it in and set it up here or maybe up front. Turn that security switch on. Now you've got power going to all those camera locations and, can, and you can use that uh, monitor to keep an eye on everything outside. Lots of storage underneath this bed. It's got gas struts. Holds this up so I can access the things in here. There's two more matching chairs, just like the ones up there, but these are folding chairs, but they're upholstered just like those. So I've got those, I can have four chairs around that plus the ottoman. So you have five people around that table playing a game or something. Uh, this is your griddle. This is your camera monitor that goes in the truck or again for security. These are your little inserts for either side of the recliners pop those in and they swivel around. Most people will leave them in here if they don't need them. And then you've got a little pigtail quick connect hose attachment here for outside. Either way, lots of extra storage in here. And I always like to point out, what do you see here? It's plywood. It's not particle board or OSB. Jayco's been using plywood for years. It's more expensive and way stronger than particle board or OSB. Now, storage up here. Motion sensor light popped on. So I've got a clothes rod up here and I've got shelves up there for shoes and so on. Yes, it is prepped for washer and dryer. You can see right over there is the dryer vent location. I got plumbing connections over on this side along with power. So if you wanted to add a washer and dryer, you could in fact do that. Um, you know what we should do? We should do a poll sometime and ask how many folks want a washer and dryer or would you prefer the extra storage keep in mind if you put a washer and a dryer it takes up a big chunk of this closet but if you have a washer and dryer in here you have a washer and dryer in here and that's really pretty handy all right so um, this reminds me this is a good thing to have on your checklist before you travel Make sure that thing's closed. Make sure you, the 
shower door is closed and latched. I'm a big fan of pre-trip checklists. I've been RVing for 30 years and yes, I still forget stuff. Have I driven off with my slide out? Yep. Have I driven off with an awning extended? Yep. I'm not too proud to admit it. So point is little things like this going down the road. If this isn't latched, these doors are slamming. They could pop together, break something. Same way with your shower door. We have pre-trip checklists that we can share with you and uh, happy to help that way. Last thing I'll point out is we do have more storage up here. This is a shallow little uh, bay of drawers for all of your goodies. Um, when my wife and I travel, she would get all of this and I might get that one right there, but I'd be happy to have it. This is also a smart TV. It's a, uh, an Amazon Fire TV with your shortcuts for um, Amazon Prime, Disney, Netflix, and so on, but it is a smart TV. All right. We're in an Eagle. We're in a 321 RSTS. This has a lot to offer. Um, I'm personally not a huge fan of huge fifth wheels. Many people are. That's why they make um, strawberry and vanilla ice cream. I like the fact that this is small enough to be maneuverable into different kinds of terrain. And yet, even though it's less than 37 feet overall length, closer to the 35 travel length actually actually when you figure part of it's over the back of your truck um, you can get into a lot of campgrounds into a lot of terrain with this and yet when these slides open up it really gives you a lot of space in here but hey thanks for joining me as always I appreciate you when you drop comments below or questions we'll do our best to get to those comments and questions I like hearing from folks and while you're down there, click like and subscribe. You'll be the first to know when we uh, post more videos just like this. Again, my name is Mike Drudge. I always appreciate you joining me and I'll see you next time. Howdy everybody, thanks for joining me today. I hope you learned a thing or two from what I had to say. If you did and feel like it, then click subscribe below. And when I post a video, you'll be the first to know. See you next time.